Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Shrift EX4, now translated. So last time, we finished up with uh, Mad Hatter's Tea Party, and we went to see the results of what happened to, to Kazuya after the general route, during the explanation of which, I got a huge guilt trip and was told basically I'm just a servant of Abaddon, I mean of the old one now. But anyway, after that, uh, all that was left of Mad Hatter was just Cheshire's head. And so we retreated into the True Mercy world in order to regroup and uh, plan our next move. So let's get to it. First things first, I see a chest up here. A great Buddha statue, I need more of those. Uh, hi Tetsutama Boa, what do you have to say? I came downstairs to take a look while I heard the racket. What's with this big group? Not only that, but you've got angels, demons, and even what looks to be a monster lord here. It's not exactly the most natural combination. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I know I'm repeating myself, but we can't afford to hang around here too long. There's a high chance that one of Abaddon's assassins will turn up before long. But if we don't meet up with that helper who's supposed to have made some headway on how to defeat Abaddon, we'll be in real trouble. I'll just sit here quietly and let the girls take care of things until that happens. But boy, they are late! I hope they haven't gotten themselves caught up in something strange. Wow, amazing! This girl's sheets are so stretchy! is rubbing Cheshire's face as he plays with her. Nina's got a sadistic streak. So this is where you live with Lucy San and the others, right? That sounds so nice. Every day must be so much fun. It is. There's a lot to deal with as a demon hunter, but thanks to these girls I can get through it. Aside from obvious stuff like looking after the place while I'm out and helping with reception, they also do most things I'm too busy to take care of myself. I really can't thank them enough. But living with multiple demons means you must also have your hands pretty full with that as well, huh? Especially since they've got no contractual restrictions tying them down. <laughs> well, yeah. But honestly, I'm not entirely against it. And it's not like there's any risk to me. One day, I could have that kind of light for Kazuya Kun. Uh, did you say something, Gami Chan? Nope, it was nothing. Just talking to myself. Hmm, ah, Yami Chan, I do adore you. <laughs> You live together, and yet you don't make them serve you as demon companions? That's quite the strange lifestyle you've got going. Your idea of what constitutes demon companions is way too strange. Cerberus and Orthros uh, are here are being case in point. Our principles may differ, but our work will work to work together. Our principles may differ, but our will to work together is the same. Though we demons consider humans weak, we'll devote ourselves to ones we have recognized as strong. Obey the strong. That is nature's law. That's why I was told when I got my hands on, these, on this summoner. Power follows the powerful. It's for that very reason I have a huge obligation to not abuse it. They told me that someday I could take over the entire world. That doesn't interest me at all. This version of you doesn't interest, and well, I guess there wants more into destroying the world, but whatever. 
I just want to protect my everyday life, my school, my brother's happiness. So I'm not going to go easy on whatever gets in the way of that. You're a good person, huh? Everyone around me says I have a brother complex, but I'm not ashamed to admit it. As long as this is not that kind of brother complex. He appears to have taken an interest in the way you and Luca can fight. Perhaps he thought swords and guns were always meant to be thrown at the enemy. Ah, uh, so that's how you've always used them then? It was pretty stunning seeing how you used your weapons. Not to mention the fact you seem to have an unlimited quantity in that pouch of yours. That's the Seraphim pouch. It's something I gave to Marian's forefather, in which I endowed with a unique improvement to suit his abilities. His, his ancestor originally used it to throw spears, but for some reason this was the only way for me to endow Marian's weapons with angelic power. Guns and spears, huh? So he's got a special ability that's related to throwing? He can also whack things! Just as the things he's whacking with was originally meant to be thrown! Despite the fact that you're living together with demonic beings, you're not being manipulated by them, nor have you become their slave. It seems you're living the ideal life. If the monsters of our world could be more like the ones here, it would make my life a lot easier. But the monsters of your world are materialized the, the same as angels, aren't they? That makes me think they don't pose much threat to humanity. Oh, but they do! Apart from the humans under my watch, there are still many angels keeping humans under their protection, forcing them to adopt their religious faith all the while. That method of abusing your power under the pretext of protection to coerce your wards is little different than how monsters operate. Humans are meant to live freely. You're right, we best be careful from here on so that our own world doesn't turn into one like hers. Hers? No, it's nothing, just talking to myself. Ah yes, the boss of his world. We will actually be running into her before long. Just who is this Lucy Demon? It's surprising that someone from another world could discern that I'm a monster lord from the moment she met me. She could even tell that you're a glut gourmand, as usual. It makes sense if I were in my original form, but the way I am now I'm almost treated like a child. I appreciate the respect she showed, but she shouldn't let uh, but we shouldn't let our guard down around her. This has been bugging me for a while, but what turn of events led you being in that form? A lot happened, but honestly, I don't know for sure what caused it. What is certain is that white rabbit has something to do with it. I'd like to pin her down and get some answers out of her. But it wouldn't be a good idea to make this situation more complicated. I'll wait until your problem is resolved before I nab her. I wonder how far away the omelette rice is! <laughs> Luca, when you told me she was big into food, was that after she turned into this form? Or has she always been like this? No idea. She was already in this form when we first met. To answer, yes, the original Alice was big into food. <laughs> I heard from Nina Chan a little while ago that you live like this with demons by yourself, and that this world is right in the middle of a war. Not only that, but it was also only a few years ago that the world even learned the existence of beings called demons. Yeah, demons originally lived in a place called the Demon Realm. It might be hard to call the current situation anything close to normal. If we want to stop the turmoil in this world, we must stop M.O.W. 
the organization who is behind everything, who have secretly been using demons to fan the flames of war. M.O.W. So they're the root of all evil in your world. Whoa! That's the organization causing this. Uh... Yeah, this is another thing that comes up later. Huh? L Luca! What's the matter? Why'd you suddenly clutch your arm? N no it's nothing. To tell the truth, my arm's been hurting a, a little since meeting Mad Hatter. Don't push yourself too hard, Luca. Even if we'll be sent back to our original selves at the end of all this, you won't be able to come back as anything if you destroy your body. I know. I don't think I've been pushing myself that much, though. Yep, that will come back in a big way later. Let's see. Yeah, we should be still be we should still be good. Might as well have some tea, why not? Let's begin. I see. Well, that's what made Abaddon start moving. As I had little interest in the human realm at the time, I didn't pay much attention to stories about Abaddon when I lived in the demon realm. To think they'd all connect like this. Huh. Intervention, parallel worlds, it's pre that's a pretty huge insane story you brought with you. Do you expect us to believe all that? Whether you believe it or not, it's all true. Uh, to think I would have to explain this to not just the guests, but to you demon girls as well. That should about do it for the explanation. Has that convinced you about the events leading uh, to us coming here? You didn't even mention the most important thing! Why does Kazuya have an angel magic in him? Didn't he give it back to Reyna directly after he escaped? And more to the point, was it smashed the smithereens when she joined, turned into Samuel? Uh, I've been wondering about that too. I don't think I asked you about that. I told you before about how the Old One and Abaddon had started interfering with the other parallel worlds, right? As a result of that interference, one powerful enemy after another appeared, such as the Fairy Queen and that vicious demon-class bird. These enemies would be too much for Kazuya to handle without magic. So I took what data I had left on the intervener through my medium, and used it to create the Kazuyakum from just before his escape from the city, one of those so-called avatar things. Originally I had thought to deal with the problem by having the intervener handle the data for me in the form of EX stages, but that didn't work. A hollow shell of Kazuyakum wouldn't be able to establish a proper bond with the demons, and without that, we wouldn't be able to solve the problem. This is a bit complicated, but I had the true mercy Kazuyakum take over the Avatar's consciousness, and made it so he would share my room with the intervener. Though we had lost the means to go to my room, the connections to each demon were still there, so establishing a link wasn't all that difficult. And to avoid throwing his consciousness into turmoil, I had the real Kazuken handle all this in a dream. Or at least, that's what was supposed to happen. Now I get it. So that's why he, suddenly he turned up on the doorstep when we thought he was sound asleep in his room. So does that mean the real Kazuya is upstairs in some kind of comatose state? 
No. A duplicate of an individual can't exist in the same space as the original. Which is why I temporarily sequestered him in our dimension using my Schrodinger ability. That's because if something happened to the one sleeping, then we're in real trouble. Even if Kazuya can hear us safe, don't worry. I'll make sure nothing happens to him. Is this really okay? Was that angel magic more trouble than it was worth? There was a reason he handed it back to that woman. If there's some miscalculation on your part and the magic inside him ends up going out of control, that also won't be a problem. I've eliminated all decision possibilities this time. That's why I chose to use the consciousness from the official timeline. At the very least, that means it shouldn't be possible for the intervener's decisions to lead them down the path of doing the bidding of those two. So this mind is my own, but this body is an avatar? So that's why there was an error when I first tried to use the capsule. Synthetic.